right, welcome back. So, buddy of mine at work, uh, his name's Matt Latham. He kind of gave me the idea to do this video. Uh, today, I want to talk about shock collars. Uh, when I first started the channel, I, I talked about shock collars a little bit, but I didn't really go into a whole lot of detail. Um, shock collars, they're, they're, they could be really useful, and you could also hurt the dog if you don't know what you're doing with a shock collar. Uh, so, his example was, was the dog would jump on him, or maybe other people, but the dog would jump on him and he couldn't get the dog to quit jumping on him. Um, he tried you know, rolling up a newspaper and you know, just smacking the dog, busting his butt, you know, a little bit of obedience. Every dog needs it. But uh, it would only work when he had the newspaper. If he didn't have a newspaper in his hand, then the dog would just go back to jumping on him. So he didn't really know how to fix it. So I told him to invest in a shock collar. And this one here is a pet trainer. It comes with two collars, it's like $45 on Amazon. But it does work. It, it, it's, it's a cheap shock collar, but it is it is a good shock collar. The only thing I don't like about it, and it's it's a battery saving thing, but if you don't use your shock collar, you know, so often it shows itself off. You got to hit a button, and then you hit the button again to do the correction with your dog. When you purchase your shock collar, I recommend it that you put it on your dog and you let that dog wear it for several days, let's we'll say seven, without even using it. You didn't even turn it on. All you done was put the collar on the dog. Now. We call it collar conditioning, but I'm gonna break it down. So what we're doing is we're getting the dog used to the collar. So it forgets that it even has it on. For example, it's like you put a ring on your finger or you put a necklace on and you put earrings in. At first, it's irritating. You feel it, it bugs you. But over time, you forget that you even have that stuff on and you forget about it. That's the same thing with collar conditioning. You want the dog to forget that it has a collar on. If you put it on immediately and then start using it immediately, then you're going to get negative effects out of your shock collar. Once your dog gets used to the collar, whatever bad behavior it's doing, when you correct it, it's going to think that that bad behavior is the one that, that you know vibrated it most of the time. That's all you got to do. You don't even have to shock them. You can just vibrate them or shock them. Uh, for example, so if the dog's got the collar on its neck and it jumps on you and it's jumping on you for several days while it's got that collar on there, it don't think nothing about it. And then one day it jumps on you, and when it jumps on you, then when it jumps on you, that's when you correct it with the remote. So then it thinks that it jumped on you. That's why it got shocked. See it? You don't want to point the remote at the dog. You don't want to raise your voice. You don't want to change the tone of your voice. And a lot of times you don't even want to say anything. You just want to make that correction. So like if the dog was to jump on you, you don't have to say nothing. You can have the remote in your pocket and just hit the button and then the dog's gonna be like, well, what was that? And then get down. And then the next time the dog does it, it's gonna be like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. So another example you guys can use a collar for is recalls. If you're having a problem with your dog recalling, um, when your dog's out in the yard or, or you take it on a walk or something, you let it off the leash and you holler for it and it don't come back, um, then you would shock it but you wouldn't scream at the dog and raise your voice again you would just holler for the dog if the dog don't come back then just shock it or vibrate it and then the dog typically will come like running back because it's confused it don't even know what happened but so that's that's when you'd want to use your shock collar for recalls um and again don't raise your voice just holler for the dog come here come here come here and then if it don't come then you shock it and don't point it at them. Don't wave it in the air. Just just use the the remote. Guys, shock collars can be your enemy if you don't know what you're doing with them. Use the tone button. I just immediately make the corrections because that's all I use the collar for is corrections. I don't use the collar to teach the dog anything. It's just you know corrections or or discipline, take care of bad behavior. That is the only time I use a shock collar personally. So disadvantages is if you was to use this immediately after you put it on the dog, then the dog's going to know that it, it come from the collar. And you don't want that. You want the dog to think that it was whatever it was doing at that time is the reason why it got shocked at that time. So you don't ever want your dog to know that it's wearing this collar. Um, a lot of times people make the mistakes. I'll put the collar on the dog and then they'll start using it immediately. Well, while the dog's wearing the collar, it's good. As soon as you take the collar off the dog, it goes right back to doing the same behaviors. And that's just like having that newspaper in your hand. You know, while you got the newspaper, your dog's going to listen. As soon as you put the newspaper down, it knows that you don't have that newspaper anymore. And it's going to go right back to doing the behaviors. So you really want this dog to understand that what it was doing at that time is what created the nick, vibrate, shock, discipline. Um, 
and every dog needs discipline. Some people say, you know, you train your dog without it. I, I mean, you probably can, but it's going to take you a lot longer. Uh, if your dog had discipline, just like your children had discipline, then they listen a lot, listen a lot better, and they have a lot more respect for you. Um, it's not beating on your dog. It's it's simply, you know, teaching them right from wrong. Same way with your kids, you teach them right from wrong. Shot collar will work on any dog. It doesn't have to be, you know, hunting dogs or retrievers. It'll work on house dogs. Uh, it's, uh, say your dog's jumping on the couch, you don't want your dog on the couch. Uh, then you put the collar on, let them wear, wear the collar for several days. And then after that, when your dog gets on the couch, you know, don't even, don't even look at the dog. Don't make no contact. Don't, don't fuss at it. Just, just shock it. Vibrate it. Shock it. Whatever you want to do. And then dog gets down, just ignore it. Completely 100% ignore it. And then later, if the dog gets back on the couch, then shock it again. You guys, this, this will, over time, will get better. More than likely, it's probably going to associate, unless you can do it when you're not in the room, you can keep it on your couch, something like that. But if while you're in there, the dog will probably stay off the couch. But when you're not home, if it's not in the crate, it's probably going to figure out that the only time it can't get on the couch is when you're there, and it can get on the couch when you're not there. Um, that's just a drawback to not being able to watch a dog 24-7. So guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.